Geek Box Forums Community Podcast. This is episode four for the week of February 27th. On this week, we decide some top threes. Talk more about the Netflix original series, Lily Hammer. Dakazu from the forums, and this is episode four. Uh, who is with me today? Mr. X. Snake dude for live, bitches. And Totoro. So this is episode four of what? All talk. You know, awesome. The Geekbox Community Podcast. The podcast that we've been doing. This is our, technically, this is our f- fifth one. Uh, Snake dude was actually on our pilot. The first thing we ever tried. Oh, yes. That thing was weird. It was. Our own version of the cage with Captain Christopher Pike. But not Nicolas Cage? No. Would have been better with Nicolas Cage. But what wouldn't be better with Nicolas Cage, really? I can think of many things. The remake of many, many movies. The The Wicker Man. The Bees! Why are you such a defender of Nicolas Cage? I really don't understand this still. Not the Bees! He is amazing. Follow, not the Bees! Have you actually seen the original Wicker Man? I, I did. Not. Oh, it's, I did. It was really creepy for it was, for a movie. Yeah, it's. I thought, actually thought it was pretty good. I, I quite liked it. Yeah. Mrs. Tartaro hated it, though. Have you seen any Nicolas Cage movie from the past five years? I try not to. Nothing I, comes to mind. I saw the Wicker Man remake. That was all I needed to see. You see? You guys I filed my report wrong. the next day. Wrong. Listen, Raising Arizona is one of my favorite movies. You know, and I really love, uh, like, Gone in 60 Seconds. That yeah, has... Gone in 60 Seconds is good. What yeah. about Con Air? Con Air is good. Face but off. like you said, like, within the last five years. Yeah. Within the last five years. He made Drive Angry. Have you seen Drive Angry? No, I've seen Drive. Drive Angry is amazing. Drive is great. It's so amazing. You know, this is really great. Drive. I know, I'm, I'm trying not to spoil everything. But there's things that happens. Does he drive? Oh. Okay, someone Is may have okay, a I... air conditioner dropped on their head. Okay, but I can name a, a few movies recently that people may not like, like The Knowing. That was pretty bad. Did that you enjoy? Was awful. Did but you not enjoy of Cage. The Knowing? Did you Did you enjoy it? I don't even know what that is. It's not the annoying, it's just knowing. It's a Nicolas Cage movie where it's, he has it's a bad kid because of the central conceit of the movie, and not because of him. But he was in it. He was the star. He read the script. He but thought he this was, was a good idea. He was not the plot. But he read the tea leaves, and okay, he knew... Okay, so spoilers for knowing, I guess. Do you he guys care if tea I spoil... leaves in this movie? Well, it's no. the future. Do you guys uh, care if I spoil it? I don't care. Go I've, right I've ahead. I've seen it. I didn't like it. I could okay, spoil it's, it. It's end of the world movie, where this where these kids are predicting the end of the world. Well, they're kind and, of uh, autistic, aren't they? Yeah, something like that. And it turns out that aliens were telling these kids that the world was going to end, and they knew about it, like, decades earlier. And they only told these kids, and then the world ends, but the aliens picked up the kids and brought them to another planet so they can, so humanity can survive. Only they're little kids that just get dropped off on an alien planet. They're going to be dead in, like, a day. Is that the end of the movie? Yes. That is the much, end of the yeah. movie. That is it. That is the goddamn end of that movie. Hey, ki- hey, we just rescued the last of humanity. Now we're going to dump you on an alien planet and leave you. The end. And it's that a bunch the- of, like, autistic kids. Yes. It's the worst. There you go. End of movie. I don't know what to say about that. The- you just lost $8. What does, what does Nicolas Cage have to do with that? I mean, there's stuff in that it. movie that was good up until that point. He read the script. He knew it was coming. He knew what he was getting into. He wasn't an alien or a kid, so he was not to blame for that movie. He may have signed on, and then that's when the movie got greenlit. And for that, I blame him. Well, I think it actually had a pretty well-known director. Who is it? Uh, Roland who is Emmerich? it? Who King is the director? Of... Well-known director. Wait, you just said he was well-known. Now you don't know? That's like saying uh, a memorable. Uh, this was a memorable movie, really. The director they... of Dark City and iRobot and The Crow. 
No, The Crow was really good. I I remember that being like one of the first movies when I was a teenager being excited about seeing. Yeah, uh, The Crow was great. Uh, it's okay. I'm dead, and I move. Yeah, but um, I think we should uh move on to our main discussion. Which wow, is, we got uh, off topic before we got on topic. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was kind of interesting. I want to hear what you guys have to say, and then yeah, I want to move on because I really don't have much to say about Nick Cage. Yeah, we have more important issues to take care of than Nick Cage's inability to act. We have to decide a top three. We're going to do some top threes. We're going to do the all talk podcast authority on some things that we decided on. And actually, uh, the reason I say that is I don't know how many we're going to get to within the time restraints. Depends on how quickly we can agree to a top three. Our first top three is uh, top three movie themes. Awesome. Yep. And we're not I, just okay, talking well, about like I, mo- we're not just talking about movie songs here. We're also talking about like the actual instrumental themes, uh, the musical themes, not necessarily the what the the meaning behind the story and you know all that gobbledygook. They were talking about music. Yep. But Muzak. I picked some. I did pick a movie that is more of a song that is its main theme. Like it is well, a song. Well, go ahead and start off, and we'll do these in three, two, one order. You well, want me to start? Oh, it, really? Uh, I, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I, I already know Dakazu's song. I already know what it is. He told me. It's uh, it's from the grand pi- motion picture Deepest Blue, uh, Deep Blue, and it was a song by LL Cool J called Deepest Bluest. Is that where his head is like a shark's fin? Exactly. That is Dakazu's favorite song of all time. I thought How you heard that. How did you know? I thought that, you were that is say, complete bullshit. I thought you were going to say Grand Torino. The song that well, the that guy sings good, at the too. end. The guy? No. The, the guy? I don't remember. The was Clint it, Eastwood was, type guy? Was, was, no, it, was it uh, was it Chris Bode or Michael Bublé? What, it was one of those guys. It was like the I'm pretty sure guy. Clint Eastwood sang at the song at the end of the movie. No, he, d- okay. he wrote it and he played piano on it, but I don't think he sang it. I'm pretty sure he sang it. So, Dr. Sure Seuss, tell us. Look t- it up. T- okay. t- tell us I'm how much you love Deepest Blue is. Okay, so uh, my third one, I'm going in reverse order. My third one is the theme from The Exorcist. Oh, the second tubular one, bells. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good theme. Uh, my second one is the uh, from the Muppet movie, the main song. The Rainbow Connection? Yes. And my number one is Indiana Jones. That the is Indiana pretty good. Jones theme. Yeah, I can go with that. I can see that. Okay, I guess I should list mine now. Yeah. Go well, ahead. Do we want to do we want to talk about his at all or Well, we'll we'll t- come back to it and talk about it in a minute. Okay. Now, let's get a pool. Okay, mine number 3 is um Halloween. And then 2 is Indiana Jones and 1 is Jaws. Snake dude. Um well, my number 1 would have to be the one that comes to mind every single time I I see anything related to robots is that is uh, the Terminator. From the first one, dun 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 dun, dun that one, the Terminator theme. Um, the second one would have to be Jurassic Park because John, because God damn it, John Williams, God damn it, John Williams. And I guess the second one would have to be Star Wars because you took mine, X, after I told you that I I was hoping to choose uh, uh Halloween, but you took it, so I'm now I'm going to choose Star Wars. Wait, for... what? What order did you, did you go in reverse order? Yeah, what you went you one to three. What's wrong with you? Can't, can't I went. said we were going to do three to one. I switch it up. How you like me? I switched it up. So Star Wars is your least of the bottom of the three? Bottom of the three out of hundreds of other movies, yeah. Okay. Totoro. Okay, well, um, you know, I, I had like a handful picked out, but I didn't put them in order. So I'm going to go with number three and say I'll go ahead and go with... Uh, the main theme from Braveheart. And then number two, I'll go with... Oh boy, let's, I'll go with uh, Indy for number two. And then number one, uh, even though it's not the main theme, but I am going to go with like the Force theme from Star Wars for number one. Not the main opening theme, but like when Luke is looking out over the, the two suns setting the Force theme. What? You mean the ending one? The... the 
No, you know da 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 Yep, that one. The force okay. theme. I would like to throw in an honorable mention to the Highlander theme by Queen. The Princes of the Universe. Yes. Yeah, I I I played that one during one of our uh game night videos. I mean, uh, Troll mentioned uh, that he had a Highlander team. That was the song that came to mind, and it was it's now in the video. Well, it should. That song is really good. And yep. Also, an honorable mention, because we discussed it earlier, Gran Torino. It was yes. actually performed by Jamie Collum, not, uh, not either Chris Bode or uh, Michael Bublé or whoever in the world else. But it, So I knew it was a jazzy type guy, but anyway... Also, honorable mention, um, House of the Dead had a really cool soundtrack. The movie itself was all right, but the soundtrack for House of the Dead was uh, was just was just good to listen to. I don't know that I want to go to. A, I was just trying to bring him back around because we. I mean, obviously we're on computers here, so let's look up this. But wanted to bring that back around to Gran Torino. So I don't know that I want to sully our top threes too much with uh, honorable mentions. So I. Wanna... I'm very surprised. We actually have movies on here that aren't all John Williams. Yeah, I mean, I always kind of joke around with my wife whenever we watch the Oscars that they should call the best score Oscar the John Williams Award. Well, John Carpenter is pretty great with his minimalistic like themes. Yeah, the kind of Philip Glass-esque. Yeah, I type. really like Philip Glass. You guys see Koi Nistatsi? Oh, uh, if I can correct myself real quick it's not house of the dead it's um house of a thousand corpses what i meant the uwe bull movie oh that is not one... a bull movie yeah no i'm talking about the one directed by uh rob zombie rob yes zombie. yes yes I was, about, I was being really quiet when you mentioned that because i was like really uh i don't know what to say snake dude yeah no, just... no no i was talking about the rob zombie movie not the, the house of a thousand corpses i always get those two mixed up that makes a lot more sense thank yeah. god yeah, no, I am no Uwe Boll fan. God. No, no, no. Okay, well, we should decide on the final list. And number one is Jaws. Uh, actually, well, I'm looking at uh, all our lists, and I would say Indiana Jones is definitely going to be on there. Cause yeah, I would this. definitely put that at number two. I'd put it at Jaws. Jaws. No love, no love for that Terminator theme? No, it's good. I think the theme itself is better in two than Terminator yeah. one. Well, the theme it, overall, really. It changed in two. Eh. It's it's in notice. all of them, but it's different. Oh, it is. Of course, it's going to be different. They have to re-record it every time they make a new movie. Otherwise, it's going to sound tinny. 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 It's tinny in a well. Tin tin. Tinny tin tin. But come on, guys, Jaws. I well, like Indiana at, Jones. Let's, let's start at three. Okay. We just got to wean down this list. Okay, we're like what things that we said in our top threes are going to be on this list, right? So let's right. wean off things. Uh, right. We don't have to have top, we don't have to have the Exorcist here. I like it, but that yeah, is good, as that is everyone game. knows, I have not seen the Exorcist. Yes, which you still should. You should. Uh, yeah, that uh, that the tubular bells by Michael Oldfield that really it really um, sets the the tone and the mood really right. well. And that's that's something that any good piece of movie music should do. Um, I guess. I would fight for Halloween, but I don't think you guys will go for it. Eh. Snake Dude might, but I doubt it. Well, I mean, I you know if we were if we were it might sneak into the top ten, but uh, in the top we're doing top three, three. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. In the if top this three, was though, eh. like iconic themes, I think the Halloween would have to be in there. But this is just best. If it's iconic, iconic I would give you Jaws. Yeah. Right. Well, Jaws is just great. Well, but I mean, the same time. I think Indiana Jones is better than that. I don't know. Does Indiana Jones make you scared to go in the water whenever you hear it? No, but uh, the Force theme from Star Wars instantly makes me tear up. The Terminator theme always makes me distrust technology whenever I hear it. It was like dun 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 dun. Microsoft has just announced a uh, new uh, operating system. Dun 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 dun. I think you're alone in something that. Yeah, just foreboding. Like, I, it's you know. a really good theme. But I don't think it would be top three. Eh. All right. Well, I would whatever. put I would put Halloween over it. I think. Uh, God. Yeah, I think I would too. 
Just to clarify, Snake, when you said Star Wars, are you talking about the main theme? Da, da, yeah, da, the main theme. Yeah. Okay. So you and Totoro are split on that. Yeah. Split so. Well, I mean, not the and, Empire music. Yeah, that's I was that was the other thing that I was thinking about. You know, do you, you know do you take uh, the Imperial March in? Star and Wars the is Imperial hard because March. a lot of the music is really good. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so. I mean, you've heard it a million times. Even you know. Even the prequels. Of, yeah, I was gonna say you take Duel of the Fates from Episode One. Duel of the yeah. Fates is one of the best things about Episode One. Yeah, True but that. I think it's overrated. Not as good as the old stuff. Oh, did Even, I ever tell yep, you guys um, a little side story about Duel of the Fates? No. Do you want um, Duel of the Fate? No. Um, I almost recorded Duel of the Fates. Almost. Oh, as part of the as part of the choir. Yeah, as part of the. Uh, Orchestra symphony, the the choir that I went to, but they went with the London Sym- Symphonic, so yeah, they went with that instead. Actually, um, our school turned it down because our school is a bunch of idiots. Apparently, what is this Star Wars? Ugh, we need to do Ave Maria for the fifteen hundred time. I'm not gonna name my school, but they were pretty pretentious. So, it's so depressing. were they like no to Star Wars, yes to Battlefield Earth? <laughs> uh, more like yes to the Verdi Requiem, but. Anyway, yeah, hey, there's nothing wrong with Giuseppe Verde. We mm-hmm. need to hear, we need to do El Carta one more time. More I don't like, think we're ready for Star Wars. More like the DSC area a couple times. Yeah. Okay. So are we? Have we decided on number three? Uh, you know what? I will. I I would get. I will just to. Um, but well, uh, well, uh, well, I did d- choose another John Williams song, the uh, Jurassic Park theme. Yeah, that's it's pretty good. That is, that's really and good. It, yeah, it is, but I I don't when I think of movie good movie themes, I don't necessarily put that ahead of. I would put even, Halloween uh, ahead of Je- Jurassic Park. Y- that's what I was going to say. Was yep. I'll put Halloween ahead of that? I'm really surprised you guys are agreeing with me on Halloween. Well, it's well, because you know, it is I'm good. looking well, at all these lists, and I don't want it to all be John Williams as well. Well, technically, but, I chose Halloween before X. Yeah, but so did I. But because, for and me, Indiana Jones was on multiple lists. But yeah, me, you didn't have to exclude it from your list. If that was going to be your third spot, you should just said Halloween. Mm. Yeah, and for me, but for me though, if I'm going to, as far as like uh, music goes, if I'm going to choose a theme between Halloween and Tubular Bells from Exorcist, I think I would actually take Tubular, tubular Bells. I've never heard it, so I got to go with Halloween. Uh, I, I it's like my tubular personal bells. preference, but I, like I can. Both. Right. Yeah, I I can I think Halloween is more recognized. So John Carpenter wanna, is pretty great. Do we want to put Halloween at three then? Sure, fine with me. So it's just what and Indiana Jones is going to be on that top three. So we have Halloween, we have Indiana Jones, and I think and Jaws is going to be there as well. Yeah, Jaws. So Jaws. we just needed to find find out the order of one and two. I it's be Indy or Jaws. I want I want Indy. I, I, I want Indy at number one. I want Jaws in number one. Jaws. Oh, we are split. Oh, we, we are a fifth party. We are deadlocked. And we are not leaving until this is decided. And okay. I don't drink coffee. The, the, no, Indiana Jaw, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jaws? Indiana Jaws. That yeah, would, let's combine them. God, that would be the greatest <laughs> movie ever. Indiana Jones fights a shark? No, the no the shark is Indiana Jones. He has a hat and he has a leather jacket and the, and the whip. whip. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. be great. Fights Nazis. <laughs> oh hi Dr. Jones. <laughs> oh hi Dr. Jones. Do not go into water. I would love racist. to see a shark scared of snakes. That kid was a little bit racist. Doctor Jones, this is no time for love. Well was it racist or was that just his natural voice? Doctor Jones, we need to go into water. Because he sounded the same in Goonies. Yeah, I you know, I don't but I think he was born here. Well, he was kind of young, though, but... I have no idea. Now. I'm not going to speak on it. Yeah. I don't want to speak on it because I was referred to as Short Round and Data when I was growing up. So I don't really <laughs> want to talk about it. Oh, I'm I'm. Sorry. But it, he's awesome. Yeah, that kid is awesome. I believe he's now like a stuntman or something. That sounds believable. That reminds me. Did you know that Masioka works at, or worked at ILM? I did. I'm, it while, I'm, I'm also it told I look like Masioka a lot. Sounds like you're around a bunch of racist people. Probably that's why your dog is racist. Is your dog racist? No, that's Totoro's dog. You got to be oh, confused. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like I often confuse Totoro Totoro's and Dakazu. dog doesn't like the brown people. Okay, all right, well, let's not go here. 
Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so Jaws, Indiana Jaws. Indy. No. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. You know, there is... I can't think of any other music from either series that stands out to me. I mean, those are just so iconic for each of those series of movies. I don't know. I, I want Jaws at number one simply because it caused people not to go into a wa- into the water for the whole summer. And Indiana Jones did not cause people to suddenly j- take up archaeology as their major. Yeah, but we're not so? talking about the movies. We're talking about the song. Well, and the other the thing... Song. It- you want, you want to talk about pieces of music that made people not want to do stuff. Psycho. People, yeah, that was really good. And that I mean, I can think of that, and I instantly want to find the spot in my home that is furthest away from the shower. That made people not want to stay in hotels. I mean, I could if I, if I were to go down... Motel? If, if I went down to the beach during the... When that movie came out, and I took a giant uh, beatbox... And I started playing the theme music, and I walked around the beach. No one would go into the water because they would hear that music and go, "Oh yeah, sharks! I probably shouldn't go into the water." I can't do that, you know. Go put the same Indiana Jones music. Go down to the university, and it's only have people switching their majors to uh, archaeology because it's like, "Oh yeah, Doctor Jones was having a really good time fighting Nazis." Maybe it'll really get people that's to a join the army. When I hear the Indiana Jones music, I want to watch Indiana Jones. Yeah, when but I, there's no, yeah, I there's guess, no fear well, that's, reaction. That's, well, but I guess that's a good thing, or a good point, because, yeah, even thinking about the Indiana Jones theme makes me want to watch, like, Raiders or Last Crusade, whereas the Jaws theme, the Jaws theme just wants, um, it makes me want to get out of the water. That, well, yeah. I mean, it, it also makes me want to watch Jaws, to be honest. It has that that prang of primal fear when you hear the Jaws music. Indiana Jones, it's it's a little bit too campy to incur any kind of emotional content. What did John Williams do before Jaws? I know or was that one, the movie that like made him? That was like his first really big movie. Um, I but think. I know, but but I know before that he actually did music for like um, uh, shit, Lost in Space. Um, he didn't do like the main theme for Lost in Space, but he did some of the incidental music. I still don't agree. I don't want Jaws to be number one. I think as a theme, Indiana Jones is just better, regardless of what emotional response you talk about uh, being afraid of the water with Jaws. Well, shouldn't music move you and make you feel things and just not just be the noise that you hear and you go, oh, that thing, Durr. that sounds like something I heard before. If you it want should... to look at music as a context of art, maybe, but if you're just talking about good music, I would put the J- Indiana Jones theme above the um, Jaws theme. Well, and I mean, so Jaws for... theme is minimalist. For me, you know, the Indiana well, Jones sort theme of. does give me uh, does give an emotional response as well. I mean, for me, it you know makes me feel inspired. It makes me feel like I can take on the world or the Third Reich or whatever. Really, it makes you feel like you could fight Nazis. It makes me feel like I could fight Nazis. That's weird. <laughs> does it also give you a fear of snakes? Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does, actually. Why did really? it have to You're be snakes? Really? You're afraid of snakes? I don't like snakes. Why did it have like to be spiders. rats? How about rats? Oh, rats. No, it was Indy's dad that didn't like rats. Yep. I don't think he cared about spiders, though. Giant boulders. It sounds to me like Totoro is going to concede to Jaws. No, yeah, Jaws. no, 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 I'm not. Okay. That's what I'm, Jaws saying. That's is what I'm saying. No, it's not. Okay, how about this? Jaws is cooler, so therefore better. Yes. No. Yes. The Jaws the... theme reminds me of the Rite of Spring. That's wrong with Jaws. I mean, you did, called it minimalistic, oh, but it, it just really... kind of starts out that way. Did you just really bring Stravinsky into this? I did. You gonna... I am a music major. Well, I mean, and I did study music, so anyway. High five. Internet high five. Yeah, internet high five, yeah. <laughs> There you go. So that we agree that Indiana Jones is yeah. number one. Jaws nope. two. 
Yeah. Jaws is one. No, Jaws is number one. This oh, is bad. You. We we should have brought in a fifth party because now we have a stalemate. Yep, stalemate. Everyone loses. You all lost. I think we can both we can all agree that both themes are really great. So tied tied well, for we, first place. We could bring in a tiebreaker if we have to. I don't. Nah. Nah. If we can't reach consensus, we cannot reach consensus. The end. Um, how, how about this? We discuss it in the forum post for this episode. And so how about this? P- liquid a poll. decides. No, I don't want liquid deciding <laughs> for us. <laughs> oh, you're funny, X. Yeah, let's just say we, we agree that we disagree. We cannot come to a consensus, which is one. Okay. Tied for first place. Okay, it's but, tied for first. Does that mean we have to come up with another third place since it's tied no. for first? No, okay. because Halloween that's still... The third is Halloween. Yeah, third nope. is Halloween. Three there is, is Halloween. No sec- there is no second place because there are two firsts. And That's we, right. We we are only tied for first because there's four of us and we are. It's a split vote. Yep. And just for the record, Jaws is the best. Me, yes, a, agreed. No. Okay. No. Next, uh, Indiana Jones is the best. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. Um, we also have a top three uh, pizza toppings discussion, which I think we can get through real quick. Who wants to start? I will start. I. Love Reverse order. Ham. Yeah, three, two, one. On one, two, my... Three. Oh. So I guess we got spoiled at what your number one is. Yep. I love ham. I love Hawaiian... Uh, pine- I, I, the Hawaiian pizza, which is ham and uh, pineapple. That's my number two. Tentative and my number... Th- no, no, we are not, well. no, we are not doing combinations. You must pick single. Yep, single. Well, that is single. If I, if I order Hawaiian pizza, that is what I get. A ham and... Uh, Pineapple. So, okay, so well, that's what's your number thing. three? We'll discuss this in a minute. What's your number three? Number three uh, would be pepperoni. Okay, I'll go next. Um, one is sausage, two is pepperoni, three is pineapple. Okay, um, since we're going backwards this time, one is pepperoni, yep. two is sausage, three is... I'm going to go with... Eh, go with mushrooms. Ugh. I like mushrooms okay. on my pizza. My favorite toppings are mushrooms... Bacon, and then onions. Bacon wow. is pretty good. Yeah, bacon is really good on a pizza. Okay, now here's the problem with what I have with ham for Snake Dude. I would never order a pizza with just ham on it as my single topping. I would never order a pizza with just pineapple on it either. I have done that, and it is great. Eh. It is great. I mean, it's sure, it's better with other stuff, but it's still great by itself. Do, do you also eat peanut butter and jelly without the peanut butter? No, because that's disgusting. Peanut butter that, sucks. We already went over this. But then you would like what he just said. He said without the peanut butter. Exactly. Okay. Just I just heard tricked. peanut butter and my immediate and reaction is to throw up. Because you're dumb. Whatever. Peanut is the best. I would put peanut butter on a pizza. I don't know that I'd go that far. I knew a kid growing up when we were in cafeteria, grade school. Whenever he get pizza, he would get peanut butter. Seriously? Well, usually it came with um, peanut butter and vegetable sticks because back then they were still doing that. I don't know. And then he would he would just spread the peanut butter on top of his pizza. I've heard of people like dipping their pizza in ranch dressing, but never oh, peanut yeah. butter. My, my wife does niece, that. My niece and nephew do that all the time. Wait, I, but not I'm peanut butter, but the to, pizza. I'm ranch actually, dressing. I'm trying to break them of that habit a little bit because they will eat. Um, they'll actually take veggies and dip them in. The ranch dressing and then like lick the ranch dressing off so they're just using it as like a ranch delivery system and that's, that's not, good. not good at all yeah i know. gotta eat your vegetables no. yeah that's what i'm so saying. they're so they're they're double dipping as jerry would say well we give them like their own little you know thing george of, would say it. yeah 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 george oh yeah now let's yeah. talk about these toppings well i think we can get number one and two out of the way right away that would be sausage and pepperoni. Pepperoni and sausage. Okay, but n- not necessarily in the order, but the one and two specifically. Yeah, 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 they are. I, I feel like they are. I want mushrooms on this top three. I, I do not. I hate I mushrooms do. on pizza. I, I, I want home with either. Hawaiian must be at least number three or two. You mean pineapple? You can't say Hawaiian. You got to pick one. You can't combine it. Well, it's not Hawaiian without ham and We already discussed pepperoni. this, man. Yeah, we already discussed this. It's single toppings. Which do you Can't prefer say, my in the to- Hawaiian pizza? Do you like the ham or the pineapple more? Pick one. Well, he has them both on his top three. He can have both, but come on, pick one. 
but we right. decided pepperoni and sausage are going to be like yep, on I would that say top three, right? Number I'm not going to. It's not my top three, but I'm not going to argue about it because you guys obviously like it, and it is well, a popular choice. Well, oh, we I should mean, also probably say that extra cheese was disqualified. Yeah, for yeah. being cheese. Stuff like, you know, gar- crushed garlic, you know, basil, or, you know, different types of cheese, snake dudes who like goat cheese. Oh, um, yeah. That, that stuff's great. There's a little sounds restaurant. Good. Yeah, this is a little restaurant in South Beach that serves it, and it, it is wonderful. Especially with, uh, with pepperoni. It's so good. It's very different. So I would put pineapple at number three. I want mushrooms. I, you know, if you're, I could potentially get behind ham, potentially, but if you're going to go the pineapple route, then I'm going mushrooms. I'd rather see bacon instead of mushrooms. Hmm. If I have to sacrifice pineapple for bacon, I'll do it. Just as so long as that means mushrooms do not make the list. Bacon is the candy of meat. I don't remember. Why, where do you, I saw why that. don't we kick off sausage then? No, sausage is the best. Sausage, no, sausage is number one. No, sausage is number two. Nah, uh, I, th- I think kick, yeah, kick off sausage. See, Do Snake Dude and I agree on this. We don't necessarily care much about the sausage. Pepperoni, yeah, no. I will give you. I mean, if you get the, if you get really good sausage, it's better than any pepperoni. Nah. Mm. Well, yeah, then in our top three, it could be uh, pineapple, pepperoni, and mushrooms. No, I do not like that list. That list sounds wrong. There's no pine. There's eh, pineapples three, uh, pepperoni one. And then whatever you guys want for two. I would put sausage, sausage on one. I'd put sausage, pepperoni, pineapple, eh. or bacon. Uh, I, think I still want sausage. mushrooms on that list. Yeah, I, mushrooms. I don't care about anything else. I want mushrooms on that list. Yeah, so I, I, can, I can agree on mushrooms. I've tasted I'd even really take, good mushrooms before. I'd even take onions yep, over okay, mushrooms. Okay, so, so let's just call it a vote for number three being mushrooms. No. I. Yay. Yes. There you go. Number the, three is three mushrooms. against four. Yeah, three, three against, against one. one. <laughs> three against one. Okay, number two for pineapple. You guys are all gross. No, sausage is better than pineapple. Yeah, sausage. It, 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 democracy, we have beaten you. Super majority. Minorities have no rights. Okay, number two. <laughs> sausage. Yeah, you, um, you lost. <laughs> sausage already beat pineapple. Oh, well. Who cares? Do you want to kick off pepperoni? No. Uh, yeah, to me, to I me, don't care for it. To me, pepperoni is the quintessential pizza topping. I, I would mm-hmm. say pizza, uh, pepperoni and sausage are equally important in my pizza. Nah, okay. not well, maybe sausage. To you guys. Not sausage. It's just, eh. pepperoni, I care yes. less about either. I like my bacon. I, I don't think you've had the right sausage. Possibly, but... This is not innuendo. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I didn't know we are going there. <laughs> Damn it, you ruined my setup. I was going to make a sausage joke. Now you ruined it. That Ruiner. was a preemptive strike on Snake, he, dude. He got the troll in before you did Snake. No, he, he did not. He didn't troll. He just messed up my setup. Preemptive strike against Snake, dude. Ah. Had to be done. I so we be... decided that pineapple's going to be two, right? Yes. Nope. I don't. Let's put, let's put it to a vote. I? No. no. I. That would be two. Deadlocked. Two. So, so now you know, we're deadlocked. You know, this is, this is great. <laughs> my Politics. God, I don't really care about the pineapple. Reaganomics. I'm just trolling. You know, I bet if Star Watts was here, he'd agree with me. Ah, too bad he's not. Yep. Yep. He didn't get voted into office. Oh, well. Can't call your allies now, can you? In the future, we should probably have an odd number of people. In the future, we will definitely have an odd number, so we don't have this problem, but... But sausage is number one. In the future, I want a jetpack. Well, I guess I, I don't really care either way, as long as mushrooms get on that list. Mushrooms can be third, too. I would put bacon or onions over mushrooms. You got outvoted. Yep, you got outvoted. Cheese. Uh, in yeah, the crust. Well, you guys want to put sausage or pepperoni first? I'd put I'd sausage. Pepperoni. But I will concede to pepperoni, be- just because I know that is more popular. Oh, look at you. Look at the big brain on Brad. So, so what's our list? Brad. The guy's name is Brett, but he calls him Brad. I believe the list is pepperoni, sausage, and mushrooms. I would not eat that pizza. No. Hey, that number three. Is they wrong. don't have to all be on there. I'm just saying, like, what are your favorite toppings? This is pizza toppings. Your favorites? Top yeah, marshmallows and M and M's. I'm Leonardo. That that, that See, in this... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they get yeah. funny toppings. It's a joke. 
Doc that, is laughing. I really no no. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not laughing. You were so laughing, laughing. on the inside. I'm really okay. not. You were giggling. Okay, do we have uh, another one we want to go to? Uh, actually, I think we need to wrap it up time wise. Yeah, I think that's time. Uh, yeah. Though I would say I enjoyed this uh, deliberation. Yep. Yeah, it was fun. We should get some uh, different topics. Maybe we can come back to this uh, top three discussion uh, at some other podcast. Yeah, with an odd number of people. Yes, with an odd, definitely with an odd number of people. Yes, we and need, there there we is need, uh, a topic in the um, on the forums titled "Top Three Lists." So, if you have any suggestions on what you would like us to talk about on future episodes, you can post them there. Yes, we'll post and- a link in the thread when we get the podcast up as well. Also, vote for me for tiebreaker. I I vote support... to have your cha- name changed to tiebreaker. Only, only it's going to be like a tie fighter. All tie is going to be in all in caps. Yep. Tie the tiebreaker. I didn't know that's how you spell tie fighter. Twin ion engine. Nerd. Capsaicin class battleship. Capsa- <laughs> and let's go take a break. We'll be back. Sausage. Okay, and we're back to talk about episodes four, five, and six of the Netflix original series Lolly Hammer. And who's with me today? Well, who are you? Well, I am Totoro. I'm Dakazu. I'm Kevin EP3. I am Mr. X. Yes. Sorry. Okay, let's go into the discussion. So, episode four, in that we. I love episode four. I did not like episode four, it was boring. Nothing good happened until the end. What? Nothing good happened in the episode? Yeah. It, had, it had its moments. It had amazing moments. Like what? Like when when Giovanni is talking to uh the son. Oh the, the son? one that uh, Oh about the women, about women. Yeah, oh, that, that. That, that was, was yeah, that, was, that was hilarious. I was laughing so hard. That was pretty good. That was ridiculous. That kid like he's supposed to be like in like fifth grade or sixth grade and like he's around that age or something and and the main character is telling him about you know oh. women we love their beautiful tits and their luscious pussies and that's like oh my god that's a kid you're telling a kid this and the kid was just smiling and nodding yeah it was ridiculous it was so good but that was See? like the only thing other than the end of the episode with the um the night ravens that was pretty good well the whole yeah that, that was pretty funny. i thought the whole um uh midwife thing was just kind of humorous in that I would not want this to happen to me situation. Or... But compared to the, the next two episodes, it was just not as good. So you personally would not also not want a male midwife? No, I mean, I would not want to have said something that would, you know, get me tra- get me and my wife transferred away from a, um, close, a, hospital. a close hospital, especially if that's what she wanted. That's because... Well, that's because you and I are sensible people, and you know, right? It still stands that the main character Johnny is uh, is kind of a dick. Well, he's kind of a little yeah, backwards, nineteen fifty ish. I'm kind of liking him less and less every episode. Well, what sometimes was... he redeems himself. Like at the end of the episode, he made he made friends with the midwife. You know, for yeah. After he like girl. basically tricked that other guy who was having like the worst life into giving up his spot. Well, but even then, he, you know, the midwife stayed. Well, he didn't really trick him. Yeah, but the midwife... Well, he he knew he was going to get it. Well, yeah, he's the fixer. He fixes all the problems, so of well, course he's going to fix his own. Yeah, in this episode, there's, um, he and his girl go... What's the name of the girl? Sigrid. I forget. Yeah, he and Sigrid, giant Sigrid, along with the son, go, um, they met this other family. They're from the previous episode or something? No, Forget. they they were in line in front of them at the hospital, I think. Or they oh, were yeah. just in the waiting room or something. Yeah, they were they just met at, at the hospital. Yeah, they met at the hospital, and then they got invited over to dinner. It's kind of a role reversal family, because this couple, um, the wife is the moneymaker, and the husband is home and being effeminate and has to take care of the kids. So, yeah, Johnny Johnny take, invites him out of a poker game 
so he can hustle him out of like his spot at the hospital. Well, I don't know that that was the initial um, reason for him doing it. It was just to get him out of the house to. Uh... But Sigrid asked him to take him out of the house. Right. Yeah, it just kind of worked out that way. Right. He kinda took like advantage of the situation. Kind of like how everything just works out for him. Yeah, he takes advantage of the situations right. that are presented to him. Yeah, overall, I did, it was okay. I mean, kind of par for the course. But there's there's some weird stuff with the uh, the cop Giselle. Uh, gear. What's it? Yeah, gear. Oh, sorry, Gay Elvis. Giselle. Gay Elvis as gear. Yeah, yeah, because there's that one scene where like all of a sudden Randley like he's singing at like a mall or shopping center and then he just kind of stumbles off and that was the scene. Well, in this episode, he was suspended, right? Yeah, he he got suspended for what happened in the last episode when he tackled Johnny and ruined the skiing competition. Well, he made the the chief or whatever the guy is. He made him not get the ribbon that he had been training yeah, for all year. The mayor or some kind of political guy. They both lost it. Yep. So he got suspended for six months, and then got drunk. Uh-huh. Really drunk. So that was that was a little weird. Is it? Is he supposed to have a family or something? Because when they showed uh, the police chief go to his house, it so, showed like. Gear and it had like other names, and then it showed like a woman and like a couple kids or something. Well, maybe he lived in like an apartment, and those were I miss that. The other people, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I assumed he was a single. I think you're high, Kevin, and you were saying things. Maybe, who knows? Indeed. Uh, anything else about episode four? Or should we move on? I think we can move on. Well, at, what, well, what... at the end, he kind of discovers something, right? Because they send him on his way to. Or the ch- but wasn't that the next episode? Yeah, the chief. No. At the end of the episode, the chief uh, kind of springs on him that he, you know, since he's got all this time on his hands, that they can he can go travel a little bit. And he decides that she decides that she wants to send him to Graceland since he's. Oh right, yeah, okay, yeah. That's, oh, so okay. that that I... that entire scene where he gets on the airplane. And that happened in this episode? Yeah. No, that was the next. I no, think that was the no, next. That was episode four. No, that was episode four. Yeah, that was four. totally episode four. Because, and so he gets on, and he kind of, you know, is asking this guy at the airport, you know, who is a Sikh, uh, you know, if he's, like, Al-Qaeda or something. He, like, searches through the guy's bag and does all this other kind of weird stuff that no normal, you know, person <laughs> would do. I mean, there's no... I don't know anyone who would, like, purposefully go through someone else's stuff well he was a cop and he was thinking that johnny was a a terrorist too he heard like beeping in the bag or something and that made him go over and look in it and then he kind of became friends with the guy a little bit yeah the guy was just cool uh, with it yeah and he was like oh yeah people mistake me for uh you know it's not the first time it's happened and it was fun watching because Gare is on the airplane. They're getting drunk with this new friend of his. Well, and then he makes some joke about terrorism, which is a big no, 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 no. Well, America. they were filling out like a yeah, survey. The customs forms. Yeah, and it was like, do you have any past connections to terrorism? And he marked yes. Yeah. Well, because he had been drinking like the whole flight. Yep. And then at the end, and then he got arrested when they landed. Yeah. And he... Kind of felt like an opposite of. Um, you know, culture shock for it for someone coming to America. You know how Johnny, it, like it's culture shock because Johnny's in uh, Norway and like he's dealing with like, the difference in culture. And Gare is now coming to America, and it's a difference of culture now. He's the opposite of Johnny, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like his whole character is the opposite. Everything works out for Johnny, and nothing works out for him. No, it really doesn't. So I think that move yeah, on I was going to say episode? that uh, really leads into the next episode really well. Which should we continue talking about him, or should we le- save that for later? Well, I want to. We'll just keep let's talking. finish. Okay. I want to finish talking about him. Well, yeah. yeah so spoilers. Yeah, he dies. Big time. Well, he before that, dies. Before Poor that, he, Elvis. When he was, you know, in custody, they asked why he had information about a, the organized crime. Well, well, no, it was, hey, why do you have a picture of a U.S. citizen in your bag? Well, no, they, they said, um, like, a mobster. Why do you have a picture yeah, of a mobster with you? Mobster, okay. Something like oh, that. Yeah, at the, yeah, at at the end of the last episode, when he's being interrogated by Homeland Security, they basically uh, slip him the, he, they give the information that, like, Johnny is a mobster. So then and he, he was finds like, out. And then he said to himself, like, mafia? And then the episode ended. 
So then that leads into the next episode, which basically starts with him, uh, at least from where he's at, you know, he's at the uh, precinct. New York City. Yeah, like the Midtown NYPD precinct. And he goes in and, you know, is talking to one of the officers there and basically asks, you know, where can I go to find all these, you know, mob guys so I can talk to them? Or what? Can, do you have any leads for me to follow up on? And basically gets rebuffed. Well, in the, the also in the the waiting room, he met a ladyboy prostitute. Yeah, oh God. Yes, <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> and then he goes in, he brings donuts, and right. then the cop doesn't want it. Yeah, he's on a low crime And then he send the cop sends him away, and then he calls the the mobsters and lets. Yeah, him the know. cop is it's a dirty cop. He's in the pocket yeah. of the mobsters that Johnny uh, got away from. And you know, I just want to say all the the dialogue and of the Americans in America is terrible. Yeah, they don't sound right at all. Yeah, you know, I would have. I like, remember the first time we we're talking about Lily Hammer. I was commenting about like the FBI agent, how I thought he didn't match an FBI agent at all. It's basically the the same thing. Like something is off. Yeah, like instead of saying, "Why don't you go get a, a cup of coffee?" They say, "Why don't you go get a hot beverage?" And who says that? No one. <laughs> Seriously. Takazu, go get a hot beverage. Alrighty. Oh, also, um, another thing proving like the uh, low production cost of this, whenever they sh- show a scene in America, they always play this song. I forget which song it was. It was the Ramones. Yeah, but they did you notice that they played it every single time? Yeah. Like, they reuse soundtracks a I lot. I didn't even notice that. that. Uh, show. I was fine yeah, with I it, though, because I either. like the Ramones. I just but, happened to notice that every American shot was like they played that song. But yeah, back to the the character. He then meets up with the the lady boy prostitute again, and then he she takes him to where the mobsters are, mm-hmm. and then they get kidnapped. I was gonna say they were promptly abduct- abducted and interrogated by them, and then and they have a scuffle, and then uh, he gets shot. Yeah, he, she breaks free, punches one of them in the face, and then the cop breaks free and then gets shot. Yeah, Gare thinks Ballsy. that's a right, good idea. Yeah, yeah. Gare gets shot. And it wasn't on, you know, obviously the mobsters didn't want to kill the guy, but it just happened. Yeah, I didn't see his death coming. He was my favorite yeah, character on the either. show. He was mine as well. Well, maybe second I, I favorite th- to the, the bartender <sighs> guy. Oh, the skinny one? The, uh, like, yeah. co-owner or whatever? Yeah. He's, he's pretty he's good. great. A barrel in there. Yeah, but yeah, it's kind of a shock. Gare dies. Yeah, that was too bad. So, and then the cop says to the the lady boy prostitute, "Go get a hot beverage." <laughs> that really bugged me. And then when they, <laughs> and then when they're processing the uh, crime scene, the same dirty cop is there, kind of interrogating it, and basically says, "Yeah, it looks like it's a drug deal gone bad. Of course, no one saw anything. There are no leads." Looks like the and then he calls them yeah or something yeah and basically uh yeah the mobsters go through Gare's stuff and they find out he's from Lily Hammer so the the episode basically ends with them like now they have a lead on where uh, Johnny yeah, is back here later yeah because of the the fanny pack had the, the had Gare's um, address yeah which they mm-hmm. the boss was kind of berating them for not um, for not looking at that well who would look at a fanny well, pack well yeah. But um, that was only half the plot of the episode. Yeah. See, yeah. Be- no, remind me, because I'm fuzzy. This is with the alcohol, right? On the um, truck? No. No, that no. was that was the That's next, next episode. No, this one was it's, with the oh, okay. art, the monkey getting a blowjob. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. okay, okay. <laughs> that thing is so good. <laughs> they open up that picture, and I knew it was going to be something terrible or awful. And you just look at it, it looks like a hand, it looks like a scratch paint, scratch drawing of, like, Chewbacca getting say, a blowjob. I was going to say, it exactly like Chewie getting a BJ from someone, with, like, with like a complete <laughs> square of, like, sh- brown shit-looking paint in the, uh, in, like, one corner. Yeah. And well, but when they showed it, I thought it was going to be, oh, you got ripped off. This is just a nobody. But that, but it turned out that was like a huge modern piece of art. Yeah, and everybody wanted it. And then, but then the guy tried to take it back, and it turned out it was reported stolen. Yeah, let's go back though. Um, it this episode featured the guy. I forget which episode he was from. Maybe he was from episode three. He was. He was one of the um, guys involved in the uh, condo deal. 
Yeah, yeah it was the yeah. guy that introduced Johnny to the the other partners of it. Mm-hmm. He he has a party at his place. And another reason not to like Johnny, Johnny hooks up with uh, some ladies at the party and leaves uh, yeah, a couple of them. S- Sifred. Uh, I'm never yep. going to learn. Sigrid. But Sigrid by, you know, by herself. Oh, and that, so. that guy is also under house arrest. Yeah, for, the party is at for his an house. insider trading mm-hmm. deal. Which makes me want to say, you know, I want to, if I'm going to get caught for something, I want to have it happen in Norway. Well, we should get that, Well, talk about that next episode. Well, but, you know, what I'm saying is, it's like, you know, inter- if you got busted for insider trading here, you know, you would go down. You, you know, I mean, you'd be sure you'd be in a minimum security prison, but, you know, to be able to be on house arrest at home. House, house arrest, arrest at yeah. home. Well, they have house arrest here. Well, but not for that. True. Well, no, isn't that what, uh, what's her name? No, Martha Sewer went to jail, man. Yeah, she yeah but she time. was under house arrest for a while, well, too. Well, that, mean, yeah, but that, that was Yeah, after. that was a means of her, or a, a condition of her probation, or parole. She had to shiv people. She had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me think, have you seen the, uh, picture of Martha Stewart and uh, Snoop Dogg together like uh, on her show and saying you know stereotypes one of these two people has been to jail I have not (laughs) anyway let's get back to the show but yeah so they go to this guy's house and he's on house arrest and they're having this big party and they wheel up with uh, Dom Perignon and stuff and uh, yeah yeah and basically uh, he introduces Johnny to another business venture and you know, art, in, art, investing in art. So he sends X, your favorite guy. Yeah, the the co-owner guy. I'm a, the bumbling I'm the, I'm a bar owner. He's great. <laughs> to go get this, uh, to go, you know, negotiate some art, and he screws it up. Yes. he he had, he had Well, he said that he knew nothing about art, and Johnny just said, it doesn't matter. Just go buy something that you can sell for more. Yeah, so of course he goes to the art dealer, he gets swindled. Well, sort of. He gets swindled by the guy that sent him there, not the art dealer himself. Right. Because he was selling the painting of the guy that sent him there. Right, well, it was... And then that guy reported it stolen. Right, and so not only do they get the money, they get the painting back as well. Right. But then it was pretty great when they went back to the art dealer, and then he just started punching him. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The bumbling (laughs) idiot. It was pretty great. (laughs) <laughs> and then they oh yeah there was that other plot going on too the about story, oh the lawyer the, story, the, 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 the lawyer oh, the is lawyer a got a cancer so yeah this cancer is that in the next episode no that's this no, no, that, that, was was this, that was this because the doctor came in and looked at the painting oh that's right the Sammy so the lawyer from like, the condo deal and he loved the painting wait let's go back the lawyer from the condo deal he is um, getting checked by his doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, you have a little thing on your yeah. back. And the lawyer freaks out. It's like, so I have cancer. How, how long do I have to live? Yeah, and they, he hadn't even had a chance to do a biopsy or anything. And the doctor's like, what? No, it's probably nothing. What? Sit down. Oh, wait. The reason he's spazzing out, I forgot. In the last episode, there was also that subplot with the lawyer. His son. Oh, yeah, he converted, yeah, yeah, converted to Islam. Yeah, converted to Islam. <laughs> right. So in the middle of the night, at night he's, I don't know if he's drunk. He got night. drunk. Yeah, he, he got, got drunk, drunk and, and then cut off his beard. Yeah. <laughs> cut off his son's beard. So the, the the son left the house. So this guy's all fucked up in this new in this next episode. And yeah, so the doctor checks him and he gets freaked out. He thinks he has cancer. He tells his daughter preemptively, oh, I, I'm dying of cancer. And you know, like you guys on you, right? It's like, oh, yeah. There's no yeah. way he has cancer. He's just flipping out. And he told his son, and then his son came back. And but he also sold all his shares in the development of the the condos. Yeah, to uh, the guy who was busted for the insider trading. Well, and who was sold the painting. So, which Johnny is obviously thrilled by this development. But he got the money to buy the shares from the painting that Johnny bought. Well, and it was also it was actually a group that he was heading up. Yeah, right. But, but basically, he that was guy able to get in the Johnny. group. Yeah, he was able to get in the group by buying, by selling the painting. So then Johnny does what he, Johnny does best. <laughs> he took him out and threw him out of the house because with his ankle bracelet. So then he's the guy who gets arrested again, mm-hmm. which was great. And then Johnny also, let's say, negotiated a way for him to keep the monkey Chewbacca getting a blowjob painting. 
Yeah, well, he brought him out and was threatening him, throw him over the the, ed, the line where he would be detected and arrested if he didn't give him the painting back. Yeah, and so... And he gave him the painting and then threw him yeah, over. Yeah, just did it anyway, which is a really dick thing to do, but the guy kind of deserved it. That guy totally well, yeah. deserved it. Bad things should happen to that guy. So after he gets the painting, it's up in his location. They're having, like, a Frank Sinatra night, and, like, the doctor, the lawyer's doctor shows up, not dressed, you know. You know, talks so they're having a little go at it, but he finds out, you know, that he's the doctor for the lawyer. And at this point, Johnny doesn't know. I wait at well, yeah, he doesn't know that he well, knows he has cancer. The doctor, but... the doctor called the lawyer and told him that he didn't have cancer, but then he continued telling everyone that he had cancer because he already told him. I mean, what's he gonna say? And at this point, Johnny doesn't know, but he he connects the fact that oh, you're my lawyer, you're the lawyer's doctor. Let's have a talk. And he says, it's too bad about his cancer, and then the doctor's yeah, like, what? No, Well, I can't uh, go into it too much, but no, he's fine. His test came back fine, which was kind of funny in and of itself. And then he said, and then Johnny was like, wait a minute. He said, well, I can't talk about my patients. And he says, you've said enough. And then he negotiates. I guess he gives the doctor the painting. That That's what happened, right? Well, I, I don't think so. Because it was hanging well, in the bar. What happened was... Yeah, it was still in the bar. I don't think so. No, I think he did, didn't he? No, I, I think he kept it. I thought he negotiated. Then what did the doctor get? Yeah, because the do- he he convinces the doctor to go over to the lawyer's house with him, and he confronts the lawyer about it. But he says, "I'll keep your secret. Just you know, you sell me everything left." On- Except he didn't keep the secret. Oh, you buy my shares. That's what he was. That's what he told him. Yeah, but he didn't keep the secret. Well, he, he changed he it took up. The, he took the he brought the doctor in and told him the cancer went away. Right, but he got he got the guy to buy his shares for what he sold the other shares too but when he had the doctor reveal this to the lawyer and his family he made it so it, it, he made it appear like there was a m- miraculous recovery right like right he may have he may have given him the painting i'm not positive i, I guess if the painting did. shows up later which i'm hoping it does because well, that no. painting is awesome that is the best painting ever in a movie or tv show <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's pretty good in fact, that, that um, should just be album art from now on. Anything else about episode five, or should we move on? I think we can yeah. move on. So this next episode, episode six, was titled Pack Your Later Hosen. Yep, and the mobsters go over there. Yep, go for a nice plane ride. To... <laughs> and they have extreme culture shock. These are the like mobsters just... who uh, they were interrogating and killed uh, Gear. Right. Yeah. The two and, guys. I mean, just and just they wouldn't even pay for the gas because they thought it was too much. Is that what he was complaining about? Yeah, yeah. they thought the gas. He was saying the gas was five hundred. Yeah, but that was in a different currency. Right. Yeah, because the Norwegian kroner are different than the. Uh... No, no, no. He knew how much it was translated. He was like, "That's like a hundred bucks in like." Dollars. No, he said 500. No, I thought he, no, 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 he said the, guy, the, the gas attendant sure? said 500 something kroners. And then the mobster guy was like, but that's like 100 bucks. Are you kidding me? Are you trying to rip me off? And then, they, you know. Oh. Yeah. Then he says, no, I'm not going to pay. And then the the gas station attendant goes after him and then gets thrown through the window. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it was in the first episode, it kind of seems like these mobsters also understand a lot of Norwegian. Yeah. 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 That is so, yeah. And it's like way too much for them to learn. It seemed like they want to learn um, just to go over and do a hit on Johnny. It'd be one thing if they were in Italy, you know, and they were kind of around, you know, Italian culture, or if he was in the Norwegian mafia or some shit. But I mean, this is, it's to the point of uh, just breaking the show. Right. It was one thing for Johnny to understand. It's it's completely different when these guys understand. Right, because one of the guys is kind of serious and a little bit more likable, and the other one was just... Very New York. Yes. He's the nephew of the new boss. Oh, he's one of the... He's Aldo's nephew. Yeah, because uh, when they're in the car, you're like you know, he says, you know, your uncle says you gotta keep your temper or something like that. Yeah, but I've... So like, from watching a bunch of mob stuff, it's like, you know, the, if anyone is... Like, even if he's a family friend, even if he's not a necessarily a blood uncle I mean it's like it's always uncle whatever oh I see but who knows oh yeah and this this episode also had those cops that looked like Abercrombie and Fitch models (laughs) yeah that was real off-putting to me that was terrible 
They, they look like I could have been a, oh. like a cop with them. Well, what's happening to Johnny in this episode? He gets to the... Is that the new condo? Is that what's no, going no, on? No, yeah. no, yeah, no, well, no, no. This is a, this is a I'm guessing he used he used the money that he got, when he got bought out of his shares to buy this place. Oh, okay, okay. So he buys into this new location, and right, and uh, yeah, and he's not getting along with the um the guy that's running the co-op. Yeah, basically. Well, they have a committee between all like the tenants and the the chairman, and him are not hitting it off immediately. Not at all. No. Yeah. So he the, he's having problems with that, and then also the other brother, the brother of the uh, bar. The yeah, the co-owner. Yeah. yeah. His brother is driving alcohol over the the border for them illegally, and then he rats when he gets caught. Well, yeah, because by he's, the he's, Abercrombie he's, and Finch models. He's pissing out in public. That guy's an idiot. Yeah. He's he really so dumb. stupid. It's so dumb. That's kind of what makes him great, though. And you know that was coming, because right before that scene, you know, Johnny was having an argument with the bar guy. He's like, you know, your brother's an idiot. He's like, no, no, my brother's a good guy. And you're like, oh, something's coming. We're going we're yep. to see the brother again. That's called foreshadowing. <laughs> um, so then he narks on him, the rats, and then... By the Abercrombie and Fitch uh, models. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. So then Johnny has to go to jail for a couple of days. And that jail cell was better than a lot of hotels yeah that's that's the other reason why if i'm gonna get you know arrested and convicted for doing anything i'm gonna do it in norway because you get to go to summer yeah. camp yeah right like you don't have to pay you get free food a nice room a tv well the, yeah he doesn't have a tv in a room and arts and crafts yeah well and even when a nail yeah. gun well even when uh he uh when the guard is oh, locked, when he's talking to his when, when the talking to his Oh, I was ahead. gonna say when the guard is locking him up for that. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to lock. I've got to. I've got to lock the door now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, it's like very apologetic and stuff. It's just really funny. And when he's talking to his lawyers, they bring some. Cake. Oh yeah, they bring him cake from the the baking group. Yeah, they have all these like like you were talking about arts and crafts. Like there's a music group and they, which is recorders. Yeah, hilarious. They're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're playing the recorder and then they're doing carpentry. <laughs> and then uh, the for, for me the best part was during the. Uh, scene where they're doing the carpentry and oh yeah and then they're eating the they're, sandwich yeah and then like a couple of big muscle heads come over and they're like hey the cold cuts are for the bodybuilders only and then uh you know takes it out of johnny's takes. johnny's hand and so johnny like gets pissed off and just grabs a nail gun and nails the guy's hand to his to the bench to the table yeah that was great. And, and then the other guys just back off him immediately. Yeah, and he's like, oh, no, oh, it's an accident. This place is unsafe. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> oh, another part I liked, though, was when after he was talking to his lawyer and his partner, bar partner, he tells his tells him to take care of his brother. Yeah, right. Because it's obvious he's the rat. Yeah, or the biker guys are going to do it for him. Yeah. And so then it's like the Godfather. Yeah, the Godfather yes. part takes two. him out on the rowboat. Yeah, yeah I was like, I was, yeah, in a lake. If if someone starts saying a Hail Mary, I'm like out of here. Well, they don't. Yeah, no, it kind of yeah. You get the feeling by the end of the episode that it has all worked out. Yeah, what did he say though to him to his brother? He's like, remember when we you burnt down something and then got, the I, girls locker room. Yeah, the set fire to the girls locker, yeah. <laughs> locker room. And then I got expelled or something. Yeah, and Dad beat me. Like for mercil- mercilessly for a year, you know. Um, I didn't tell him because we don't rat. Yeah, I'm yeah. not because we don't snitch. Like we don't snitch. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. That was actually a really good scene between the two brothers, and uh, it was really uh, believable. Yeah, it was great. And but then while that was going on, there was also the the big biker guy. That's I guess the bouncer at the club. Mm-hmm. He, find out that he lives with his the guy mom. who went down the uh, ski jump oh, yeah <laughs> turns out now that guy is their friend and, and Johnny he lives with his hat mom yeah yes and then but then later Johnny gives him his old place his old house yeah. next to the police chief right mm. and the mobsters follow Johnny there well, after they kind of find out because uh oh yeah, that's the, right the whole the whole the mobster guy finding out everything accidentally. Yeah, they were at the uh, hotel. The pedophile guy just tells him. Yeah, the pedophile uh, 
trainer guy for uh, the foreigners. He's having a seminar at the bank. pedophile trainer. <laughs> <laughs> he trains pedophiles. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Yeah, evidently he's the guy who uh, he he does all the you know the foreigners. Uh, yeah, the guy with the funny mustache. The culture trainer. Yes, yes. He um he is running a uh, conference at that hotel where the mobsters are staying. One of the mobsters ends up. He's like, oh, I'm not feeling well because I'm getting sick. So he stays back while the other one goes to look for information. He just happens to see the conference. And yeah, and that, they're that... they're using pictures of Johnny as a you know inspirational story. Yeah, they have big pictures of him on like a uh, projector, like just giant pictures of him. And then he goes over and talks to him, finds out exactly where he is. He finds out that he owns the bar. So they they trail him from the bar to this place. To his old house. And at the end of the episode, they they go into that house ready to kill him, but they find the biker dude. I I am surprised they didn't just kill the biker dude. Well, that's the thing. They're mobsters. They should have because now they that guy's just going to tell Johnny that they're there. Well, yeah, like, oh, these two kind of American-looking is... guys came and beat the crap out of me and, in the middle of the night. And wise guy sounding, wearing suits. Well, and then there were, there were uh, the one kind of older policeman was, you know, following up and looking around. Oh, yeah, that was and, great. you know, finds out that there are these two Americans staying at the hotel. So he goes to check it out, and they knock on the door, and then they flee, and they go out the window. And so this old guy kind of busts in, and then... Uh, Jumps out the window too, and like busts and his hip or cuts something. to him, like laying yeah, on exactly. his back. Yeah, exactly. They're they're like running off, and he's you know down for the count, looking like a he looks looking like a turtle on yeah, his exactly. back. Well, they're probably being smart. You know, they're in a foreign country. You know, it it could be a lot of trouble if they kill somebody that's not. Yeah. Like, but they didn't like, want to kill, kill the guy. They didn't want to kill the guy in America either. They don't want to kill anyone. So you think well, yeah, that's, that's, that's funny? Though. What when I it, think I think it's because it's. A foreign show. That's why it's such a weird portrayal of the mobsters. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, it's just it feels like it's a little odd. Everything is just a little off. It's like they ran the script through Google Translate. Yeah, translate, and then back again, and then through Japanese, and then through Chinese, and then through. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you've seen that where they've like where they take stuff, they translate it into one language, and then they translate it back out and see what it comes out as. I mean, I have not seen that. Uh, try it sometime. Just and do it with like I will. basic phrases. Will it come out as uh, "go have a hot beverage"? Probably. <laughs> you that really it. bothered you, didn't it? It did. <laughs> also, some of the food on this show looks really good. Yeah. The like when uh, the the police chief was at the mall and she got that giant cinnamon roll. Yeah. That looked so good. The roll cake that they bring in when he, he's talking to the lawyer. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, and they even comment on this. This is pretty good. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, and the police chief also makes waffles and sells yeah, them I or saw, something. Yeah, I saw that. That was in the episode three, I think. Yeah, at the yeah episode snow, three. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, ski race. So, yeah, over there they're eating carbs. And then in the last episode, the gear brought the donuts. And they're like, no, we don't eat carbs. Yeah, that's so it's like weird. the opposite um anything else about oh yeah the last episode episode six uh basically he has this problem with the chairman of his new place and then like he's able to uh i guess what does he do does he buy out the other no what he does he he figures out that uh... he yeah he just because the other guy was in charge so he just convinced the other people that he that guy had bad ideas and was wasting all the money. Well, yeah, because he was saying that like forty was it forty or was it sixty? Forty or forty percent. Forty percent of, of the rent. rent was going to gardening, and that they could more easily bring like basically pay someone else to do it, and then instead of doing these dugnads, which I guess translates as like it's a time when they all all the tenants kind of get together and they clean everything. So instead of doing that, they could actually bring people in to to. Um, yeah, they could hire a staff, yeah, a cleaning staff, yeah, cleaning staff, and not have to deal with that. And then everyone's like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely." And uh, you know, oh yeah, gets one over. That, on the that guy. reminds me of earlier in the episode of the, the fire drill. Oh right, the the guy in charge had a fire drill and never gave Johnny the notice that it was going to happen. And they tried to make it a realistic fire drill, so they had like a smoke machine and everything, so Johnny's freaking out. And then the guy puts his finger in his face, and Johnny hits it away and hurts him. And then 
he files a complaint and tries to get him kicked out or something. Yeah. And that's when Johnny decides that he needs that guy needs to go. And then mm-hmm. he, and then he does. He basically makes it so that uh, well they all meet at the Flamingo Bar and then he kind of just essentially he wines and dines him. Yeah, he wines yeah. and dines him, and then winds and up then getting gets elected. The ideas. Yeah, he gets elected to the new board or to the yeah, new he, chairman. He, he becomes yeah, he's he's in charge. Because the guy's like, not with me in charge, none of this will happen. And then they're like, well, then you should go. Yeah, time for you some what? Fresh, I, blood. fresh blood. I don't know if I it's I don't know if I like enjoy watching Steven Van Zant or if I'm enjoying the character Johnny because I think what I'm enjoying is I'm enjoying Steven Van Zant yeah, more than I am the character of Johnny. Steven yeah, Van Zant is very agreed. charming and very good, but the character of Johnny is kind of like this dick bag, you know, just Mister Fixer, mo- typical mobster guy. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it would work so well if they had someone even like um oh um. I'm trying to think of the name of the guy who played Polly Walnuts on The Sopranos. Chaz Palminteri. No. If they if they had. Can we just say Chaz Palminteri? Until yeah, whatever. But if, <laughs> even if they had him, I know it's not him. You know, but Chaz Palminteri is great. Well, you know, someone else who would have been really good for this, I, and who is actually really funny when he has funny dialogue to work with, is uh, James Gandolfini. I think he would have done this really well. Well, I also assume Stephen Van Zandt is helping to write a lot of the English dialogue, yes. like we discussed before. Yes, so, I don't yeah. think he wrote hot beverage. I don't think no. I th- I think <laughs> I think he I think he wrote coffee, and then they ran it into Norwegian, and then they threw it back out uh, into English. I just love how that bothers you so much. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> I didn't. Well, even who either. says that? No one. Well, these people obviously. <laughs> you, you guys need to rewatch it and then listen for hot beverage. I'm gonna rewatch it and find that thing I was talking about. What thing? With the gay Elvis in the family. Oh, Remember yeah. to take your drugs so that you see it again. Indeed. Druggy. Okay, so do we have anything else we want to say about episodes four through six? Other than I want to I... say it one more time: monkey getting a blowjob. <laughs> no, Chewbacca getting well, but a blowjob. In the job. show, they say the monkey getting a blowjob. Yeah, they do say monkey. I I will say I don't really like the title sequence. Of the show. I skip it. The intro sequence? Yeah. I like it until it gets to the Norwegian like music. See, I like it once it gets to the Norwegian music. Because it's 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 very know, Celtic. I... Oh. I saw it once and then I'm like, I am just gonna skip it. But it's but it we is only very have... Spartan. We have two episodes to go. That's it. Yeah. So I, I Yeah. I'll kinda be sorry to see this go and I hope uh that it definitely pans out that you know the last two episodes lend themselves to another season because we shall see yeah i i, I really hope so because i would kind of like to watch this again well, well if this, there isn't but... a second season i hope that it wraps everything up exactly yeah i don't want uh i don't want that cliffhanger if they're not going to bring it back do you think johnny's gonna die no, no. i don't think so i Just think speculation wise no yeah it's time to bring back. No, I don't it's, think it's so. time for I think so. the segment Wild Speculation. <laughs> I think they'll end it on like somewhat of kind of a cliffhanger. I I don't know if they'll even have not. that. I think every episode takes place like months after the previous. Yeah. Yeah, I don't they have no like they don't tell you any like how much time has gone by. No, I could totally see the last episode being, you know, Sigurd having the baby or and everything being fine, and the mob going, the American mob going away, and you know, just set him settling down into everything. Yeah, uh, if... was it a, what episode was it that they found out they're having twins? I think that was the Bent Wife episode. Yeah, it was, yeah, it that was, was the, the fourth midwife. episode. Okay, and then there was the whole stroller subplot. Yeah, and the and the yoga, In the fifth one, and the yeah. and the yoga where they sent the the guy they they <laughs> sent down the ski thing <laughs> with the with the doggy. Oh, did you see his yeah. face when he was at the yoga class? It was ridiculous. Yeah, doing the doggy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so he tried to look like a dog. That was great. Okay, well, I think we're gonna work on wrapping this segment up. So, um, definitely go comment in the Lily Hammer thread at, on the forums uh, forums.geekbox.net. They'll We'll talk about it a little bit more in the outro, but uh, I think you know while we're there, we're kind of looking for you know what are we going to do, you know after we finish up this series. Well, you know, we have a movie lined up that we're going to watch. Yeah, right. uh, Red State. Right. Is that right? Red State. Red State. The Kevin Smith oh. uh, horror yeah, movie. It's like a it's like a horror movie, right? 
Right. I don't know much about it, but none of us have I think seen it's, it, so we want to watch think it's, it. I think it's supposed to be Kevin Smith's first horror movie. Yeah. But anyway, I think it would behoove us to go ahead and actually start, you know, kind of looking towards, you know, uh, what we want to do after we finish up everything with Lilyhammer yeah. and and then do Red State. So we'll definitely post a forum or a thread on the forums. You know, let us know. Do you want to, you know, watch a different show? You know, preferably something that's on Netflix that we can kind of watch beginning to end not something that's yeah something like twin peaks twin peaks you know twin peaks has about 30 episodes and they're about you know 40 to 60 minutes each also would they if would you guys like us to like do a longer series so that it would be drawn out over more episodes or do you prefer it being short so that it's only a couple episodes and we move on to something else right or you know, or do you prefer season... movies as well you know right yeah you know uh, we're definitely looking for any sort of suggestions on you know how people want to do that you know we could do the simpsons if people like long things watch one episode a week and that'd be good for the next 10 years yeah five 500 episodes would take us exactly 10 years <laughs> mm-hmm. That'd mm-hmm. Be... yeah i don't think we should do that it's no, a bad idea that's, that's a that's... terrible idea yeah. kevin why'd you have that idea i don't know stuff just comes to me sometimes it's dumb kevin simpsons what suck yeah whatever i still like it all right simpsons is okay All right, well, unless anyone has anything else, then we'll see you guys next week. Peanut butter sucks. You suck. Thanks for listening to this episode. Thanks to Snake Dude for Life, Kevin EP3, and special guest Tumble for joining us this week. Next week, we're going to discuss anime, starting with Cowboy Bebop, because Totoro just finished watching it. We'll wrap up on the Netflix original series Lilyhammer, and we'll decide another top three. If you enjoyed this podcast, please donate to the official Geekbox Mumble Suit, where we record the podcast and we also hang out and talk. If you'd like to participate in our podcast, send a PM to either Mr. X, Totoro, or me, Dakazoo, at the Geekbox forums at forums.geekbox.net. If you have any questions, send them to podcasts at alltalkpodcast.com Follow us on Twitter at alltalkpodcast And keep an eye out on alltalkpodcast.com We'll be updating the site soon Be sure to listen to the Geekbox Comic Conspiracy and the Comedy Button Podcast as well I love you I know